You know, Dan, uh, we actually do have that sound, and I want the audience to hear it because you're absolutely right. He, uh, he bristled uh, at the media's repeated questions and tried to turn the tables. Uh, let's take a listen. What you managed to do is pull up the few who do not represent the majority, who are saying unacceptable things, who shouldn't be saying those things, and they, some who actually physically attack police officers, which I've said is absolutely unacceptable. We will prosecute them to the fullness. Every fullest, everyone must participate in finding those individuals, providing information to the police, intervening to stop them, alerting the police. I will keep saying this over and over. The question is, will you tell the world about it? Because you all are part of this too. So yes, there are some bad people who say inappropriate things. There are some people who say hateful things. They have no place in these protests. They are not what I'm talking about. You know, Dan, it was interesting because that was completely counter to the tone and the message it seemed like he started out with on paper. But to your point, perhaps the real de Blasio didn't take long to come to the surface. Charles, he's trying to protect his, his tail here. That's not what he told the cops, by the way. He's not telling you the truth. The, I, I have a number of friends I went through the police academy with almost 19 years ago that call me and text me all the time and said that during these protests, yes, we absolutely respect the right to peacefully protest, no question. They were told basically to stand down, let them blow off steam, despite the fact, Charles, that there were people out there who were never interested in peaceful protests. They were interested in spitting in police officers' faces, pushing these people, men and women, by the way, Charles, this is a job for them. You know, they have kids at home. They take take out the garbage at night and have to put oatmeal on the table for their kids. You're going to push them and spit in their face? You're not protesting, okay? You're a fool. You are doing nothing but creating chaos and literally the destruction of the institutions that have made this country great. And that is not what the mayor told the cops. He told them to stand down. And one more thing, Charles, on this, because I, I can't, I, I mean, I was almost infuriated listening to that press conference. When he told them that, he said, listen, if you see any incident or hear about any incident of a threat to right. a police officer, report it. And please do. Call 911. But he saw it during the, the during the, some of these riots. There was a lieutenant on the Brooklyn Bridge who was brutally assaulted, and he called it an alleged assault. He is saving his butt, and I'll tell you, the only person who looked even remotely uh, in a leadership position up there was Commissioner Bratton. Speaking of Commissioner Bratton, he did go to bat for the mayor. In fact, uh, at one point he said that it's not new, the uh, mayor and, and the police being at odds, sort of saying, what we're watching is sort of just commonplace. This always happens, but it doesn't I feel like uh, we've ever seen it to this degree, at least that, that I can remember. Charles, Commissioner Bratton is a good man. He had to do the right thing. Uh, he's not a politician. He's a police officer at heart and always will be. But what he said, again, was, was not actually the facts. Yes, unions have had arguments with mayors before. When I was a police officer, we had some arguments with Mayor Giuliani about some bargaining things on a salary. It was never, and let me be clear on this, it was never about Mayor Giuliani not actually backing up his own police department. These were arguments about financial arrangements. What they had was PERB, the Public Employees Relation Board, where they wanted, these were little nuances of the job. These were never about a mayor who doesn't believe in his own police department. These are what I said when we opened up this segment. These are ideological differences. This man is unfit to lead. He does not believe in what made this country great. And that humiliating press right. conference hammered it home.